Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class, the Windsor Newton Moose Lodge Wall Art. My name is Tim DePack, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. I'm being joined by Mandy Peltier, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. And Mandy will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the products being used in the class and showing you how to perform some of her watercolor painting techniques by creating this buffalo check wall art using the watercolor paints of uh, cotton watercolors. She'll also give you a sneak peek at her upcoming class, and I will provide the link for you in the chat on the side if you wish to sign up for that class. Uh, also, upon completion of this class, you will receive a survey in your email inbox. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics that you'd like to see Mandy perform in the future. Uh, before we begin, we will drop a sketch, um, the link for the sketch in the chat over there, in case you haven't gotten that yet, that you can follow along with Mandy. Uh, also, as Felicia said, the class is being recorded, so within 24 hours, you can go back on and watch the replay of this, whether it'll be in the michaels.com or the YouTube channel from Michaels. Uh, I'd like to let everybody know, I'm sorry, as we're about to begin the class, you can either paint along with Mandy or you can sit back, relax, enjoy the class and come back at a later time to complete it. That being said, I'm going to pass over to Mandy. All right, thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. It's great to spend the afternoon with you. Um, we have a fun project today. I don't know if any of you are like me. I love all things rustic, and I have for years. Uh, I used to have some friends make fun of me for it because I would say rustic all the time when I was looking at things. So I think this project today sort of fits that bill. And I'm going to go ahead and share my other camera so we can get started. Okay, so I always start with an overhead view of the supplies. The supply list for this class was a bit long, uh, but I don't think it's as intimidating as what it looks like on the supply list because you likely have most of the supplies on hand anyway. Uh, so this is the project we're gonna be doing, this moose lodge, ski skate, sled, rustic wall art. Usually you might see this style in like acrylic paint, but we're doing a watercolor version. And normally in my classes, I use the Skechers pocket box set. Every single watercolor class I've taught so far this year, that's what I've used. But today we are gonna use the tubes. So we're going to use the hookers green light color and the lamp black color. So I pulled these from this particular set that's on the Michaels website. Uh, but you can also use the individual tubes that you can just buy in individual colors. And these are eight milliliters, whereas the little ones that come in that set are five milliliters. But either way, both of these colors are in that set I showed, or you can buy them individually open stock from Michaels. And a couple other supplies that are sort of important to note to help us with the Buffalo plaid design. I'm going to be using painter's tape today and the supply list calls for one and a half inch painter's tape, which Michaels does sell online, but you can also use three quarter inch tape like I have here because three quarters of an inch doubled up is, is one and a half inches. So we just want the stripes to be one and a half inches wide. And then we're only using two colors today. So you don't need that large of an artist palette. Um, a heat gun will help you if you're going to complete this with me live during the class, or if you want to keep up with me in real time on the replay. So a heat gun will be helpful. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a blow dryer. It'll just be important to dry the first layer of stripes before we paint on the second layer. We are using scissors today uh, because I gave three outlines as part of this class. I gave the normal one that I give for all my classes where it is literally just the entire outline. And then there's also this one where if you're trying to complete this with me live and you haven't already transferred your outline, I'm going to cut this mousse out and I'm going to use it as like a stencil to trace around because it'll be a lot quicker to trace around this than it would be to try and freehand draw the mousse since it's a little complicated, it's not symmetrical. So you can try to freehand it if you want, if you haven't already transferred the outline. Uh, if you haven't already printed this, you can do so now. Uh, we won't get to it right away. And then for those of you who don't want to uh, use a ruler to help with spacing of the stripes or you're just wanting to literally transfer everything, I went ahead and provided a grid for um, the stripes for the buffalo plaid. I just did that for those of you who would benefit from it, but you can just do what I'm going to do where I'm going to use a ruler and I'm just going to sort of use it to measure out one and a half inches for each stripe, but we'll get there in a second in a few minutes here. Uh, okay, so another new supply item that I haven't used in any of the classes is this one inch one stroke Cotman brush. So this is a watercolor brush. It's a square brush. 
it's called one stroke. They also have one that comes in a half an inch size. And I use the half inch one stroke brush for my Valentine's Day class, I believe in February. So today I'm using the one inch one stroke brush. Now this is so that we can very quickly and evenly paint on the stripes. If you do not have the one stroke brush or something like this, you could just use a thicker round brush like this is a tin I have here and you can just try and paint it on this way. But this is really the most efficient way to get the stripes on evenly and consistently and quickly. All right, so hopefully that answers all the questions. Um, the other supply item is a piece of professional paper. I took a piece of nine by 12 paper from this pad here and just trimmed it to be eight by 10 in size. And then one supply item on the list was marked as optional, and that's a pro marker, a black pro marker marker. Um, say that 10 times fast. And I have used this before in some of my other classes, so you may already have this, or you may just have another black felt tip marker. You can use this to do the lettering if you want instead of painting it on. So I would recommend you paint the mousse on, but you could write the lettering on if that's easier for you. That's why I put it as optional. And then of course, a graphite pencil and eraser for the outline. So I think I covered everything or at least everything that needed to be covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and place some things aside. Um, what we're going to do is um, mix our colors first. So I'm gonna set aside my ruler and my one stroke brush. So keep your number four round brush out. The number four is on the supply list. Keep your two tubes of paint out. I'm gonna pull down my artist palette. I'm gonna pull down my water. I'm gonna keep my paper towels handy. I always work with paper towels for blotting. So this will be a first because we haven't used tubes in any of my classes. And I believe I'm using them in a different way than what you've seen other artists use them. Um, a lot of artists will deposit them onto their palette and let them dry. And then they'll use them as if they were dry half pans or cakes. We will be using them wet today. Uh, so I am, I'll start with the green. I'm actually going to mix up two wells of green because one well will be enough for one set of stripes and then the other well will be enough for the other set of stripes. So you could just mix one green and then mix up more green, but I think it'll just be easier to mix up two greens now. So I'm going to unscrew the cap here and I'm going to place a pea-sized amount of paint into two wells on my palette. So there's one, and there's two. So you can see they're about pea sized, maybe a little bit smaller than peas. And I can screw the top back on. And then into a third well in my palette, I'm gonna do the same with the lamp black. So I'll unscrew the top here, pea sized amount, screw the cap back on and set it aside. All right. And then with my number four brush, I'm going to swish that in the water to get the bristles wet and evenly moist. Normally in my classes, we only place three scoops or so of water into my wells, but this tube watercolor paint is very pigmented. So I am going to place 10 scoops of water into each well in my palette because that will get us to have about the right consistency. So if you've taken my classes before, I use my brush as if it were a scoop. And so I'm just gonna literally place one scoop two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll stop counting so I don't mess you guys up, but I'm going to repeat that process with my other green and with my black tin scoops into the other two wells on the palette. You could probably use a syringe too. It might be a little bit easier, uh, but then it might be harder to count the drops if you squeeze a little too hard. Uh, you don't have to be perfect with the drops. I just think 10 is a good guide here. But you can always have a scrap sheet of paper nearby to test um, the consistency and the opacity. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir the water and the paint together. I'll start with my first green. So I'm just using my number four brush. Because we're using this paint wet and it's very thick, you may have to stir each color for just a few seconds here to really make sure you uh, dilute it all into the water. So you can see here I'm stirring, I'm taking my time, I'm trying not to spill it over into another well. And then after I've stirred it all together, I'm, I can use a scrap sheet of paper and just test. So you see how vibrant that is? It's a beautiful consistency. It's a bright Christmassy green probably 50% opacity. I would say that's what we're going for is about 50% opacity. So if yours is a lot lighter than this, um, you could just try and add a little bit more paint, maybe just pull 
from the very top of the tube itself. Um, if it is too thick, you'll want to add a little bit more water. So if it looks like it's a darker or it's more opaque, you want to add more water. I would say with the black, it's okay to have it more on the opaque side because one reason we went with tubes for this class, partially because these were the perfect colors we needed. This is the hooker's green light is a Christmas green. And then the black is, is black. We don't have to mix a black like we normally do with the Skechers pocket set. Um, but I also like using the tube for this one because I can get a more opaque looking black using the tubes than I can with the uh, half pans. So I'm going to mix, I'm going to stir together my black as well. And I just take your time because there will be a couple little lumps you'll sort of have to blend into that water. Because the last thing you'd want to do is unevenly mix it together and then you place a thick stripe of black or something onto your uh, your your project. All right, so you can see this black is pretty opaque right with those 10 scoops of water. I'm going to leave it because I think that'll be a really nice color for the mousse. I want the mousse to look a little more opaque than what you typically think of when you think of watercolor. Watercolor is a transparent medium, but when you use uh, tubes, you can kind of uh, deceive people and, and it can look a little bit more opaque depending on how much water you add to the, the paint. So, all right, so our colors are mixed. So basically what we're going to do, if any of you have um, ever painted a bedroom wall or living room wall with stripes, um, you know that you can create perfect crisp lines and stripes by using uh, painter's tape. So we're essentially going to do the same thing, but um, to a piece of watercolor paper. So I am also going to just, because I don't want to put paint on my work surface, or at least not more than what's already on there. Um, I, so I have just a piece of cardboard here. You don't need the cardboard. Um, but I'm going to just place this on top of the cardboard so I don't get paint onto my um, gray tabletop surface here. All right, so I'm going to take my painter's tape, and I'm going to start by placing one strip right along the top, not all the way up to the, the left top corner, but a little bit below it. So I don't need a small piece because I just need enough to cover the paper itself. So let me find where this starts here. All right. So I'm going to just peel off a small piece. So I'm actually using artist tape. I keep calling it painter's tape. They're basically the same thing. I just think um, artist tape is maybe slightly tackier. Um, so I am going to place it down. So I have what looks like a triangle at the top of the paper. I'll hold this up so you can see. See, there's still a little bit of paper exposed, like a small triangle. And so right now I have one piece of painter's tape down. Now I said I'm using three quarters of an inch, but I want these stripes to be one and a half inch wide. So all I have to do is tear off a second piece of painter's tape and place it right up next against the first piece. And now this measures one and a half inches. All right, so if you have one and a half inch painter's tape, then you don't need to double up. We just went one and a half inch wide. And then this is where I'm gonna use my ruler. And I'm also going to grab my graphite pencil and I'm going to use my ruler. I'm going to place it right along the bottom edge of that second piece of tape. And I'm going to measure one and a half inches and just place a dot at one and a half inch. And I can do that in a couple other spots, like kind of towards the top and maybe kind of towards the bottom. And this is just going to be a guide for me where I need to place the next strip of uh, painter's tape or artist tape. So you can see I have three dots there to kind of help guide me for my next piece of painter's tape. So I'm going to tear off a slightly longer piece because it needs to be enough to cover the paper here. I feel like today's project is very crafty. I love that it sort of like merges fine art with crafts. Um, I started off being a very crafty person. I was a crafter before I was a fine art artist, I guess you could say. Um, so I feel like this merges my two worlds and I love it. So, all right. So I'm going to place the next piece of painter's tape right along those dots that I put on and I'm going to smooth it out so it adheres evenly to the paper. And actually I noticed here, aha, this is a good teaching moment. See, there's a little bit of paper exposed right above this piece of painter's tape. I'm glad they noticed it. I want to make sure I cover that. So I actually didn't tear off quite long enough of a piece of painter's tape, but that's easily fixable. I can just place another small piece to cover it because I want to make sure I only paint on the stripes and nowhere else. So I have one piece of painter's tape, it's this uh, third piece. I have a three, three quarters of an inch long or thick stripe. So I'm gonna add the second piece of painter's tape to make it one and a half inches. 
All right, so we have our first finished stripe and now I'm going to use my ruler again and I'm going to mark off another stripe one and a half inches apart. So use your ruler, mark one and a half inches, a few spots along this fourth piece of painter's tape, just as a guide for placing your next piece of painter's tape. I mean, you could eyeball this too, but I like to be pretty precise. So using the uh, graphite pencil and the ruler works really well for me. So I'm gonna tear off a pretty long piece of painter's tape here because this is a pretty long section and I'm going to use those dots as a guide for where to place my painter's tape. All right, and then smooth it down. And then I need another piece of painter's tape so I can make this new section one and a half inches wide. Okay. So it's going to look like um, a green candy cane, this first <laughs> layer we do when we're done. So you could always use this as a background for something fun too and make the stripes red. Um, there's a lot you could do with this, make like a rustic candy cane sign. That was under consideration for this class and we went with the moose. All right, so I'm using my ruler again and I'm going to mark off one and a half inches with little dots just to help as another guide. And then we'll be just about done with this first layer of stripes here. So I can tear off a slightly smaller piece of tape because I'm working towards the other corner. And so I'm not covering as much paper. And you can reuse this painter's tape. I wouldn't recommend you reuse these strips for the second set of stripes we're using, but you could always hang them off your craft table or something and um, reuse them for another project because this does use a lot of tape, but um, it does make it a little bit easier to paint on these stripes. I mean, you could freehand it especially with that one outline I provided, but I think this process is a little bit easier. All right, so I have room, I think, for like a really small stripe. I mean, it's gonna be really small. So right here is one and a half inches. So a little piece of tape right along that bottom corner there. All right, and we have our first set of painter's tape on and we're ready to paint on our first set of stripes. All right, so I'm gonna just make sure all my paint is really firmly on that paper, press it down. All right, and then I can pull down my palette here and I'm gonna use one of my greens for these first sets of stripes. I'm going to use that one inch one stroke brush. I haven't used it yet. So I'm gonna place it in the water for a few seconds, swish it around. Now this paintbrush has a lot of bristles. So I'm gonna kind of stir and swish for a few seconds just to make sure those bristles are evenly moist. But this will also, pick up a lot of paint because there's so many bristles. It'll absorb a lot more paint than say a number four would. Um, so I blotted it on my paper towel a couple of times too. All right, so we're gonna use just one of the greens for this first set of stripes. Now you'll want to work methodically and quickly, but evenly. So I'll actually start with this first, this second stripe and then I'll paint on this little triangle after I'm done with the stripe. But I'm basically, basically gonna move my brush in a back and forth manner just real wide back and forth strokes to try and quickly and evenly cover this stripe with some paint, okay? So I'm gonna put some green on my brush and you can, I'll show you here. So you see, I'm just using like a back and forth stroke just to quickly and evenly cover that stripe. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here. And see how quick that was? So if you were to use a number 10 brush or a number six brush, it would be a lot harder to quickly cover uh, that area quickly and evenly. And then I, I like to kind of start in the middle and then kind of work up and down and over. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on this next bigger stripe here and just add as much paint as you need to kind of cover that stripe. My brush actually still feels just a little bit dry. So I just placed it for a second in the water. You don't need it um, like, you don't need to soak your brush in paint, but you do need to make sure you have enough to evenly cover the stripe here. And then I'll move on to this one. So you see this pretty quick process. Uh, if you are not trying to paint along with me dry, um, you can let this set of stripes organically dry before you go over with the next set of stripes. Um, but I am going to use the heat gun, like I said at the beginning, just to sort of speed it along. Um, but if you don't have a heat gun or you're planning to just let this organically dry, that's fine. Uh, the term is bone dry, let it be bone dry. Um, let there be absolutely 
uh, no wet paint still on the paper before you go over it with the next set of stripes. Let it be completely and fully dry. And that's what we're going to use the uh, heat gun for. So after you have all of your stripes covered with an even layer of paint, I'm gonna turn it on to the high setting and I'm just going to go over each stripe for probably a good minute, maybe even a minute and a half until each of these stripes are fully dry. And then you can remove the painter's tape that's already on the paper. And then you can apply the second layer of painter's tape going in the other direction to create the buffalo plaid design. So see how this is kind of crafty? We're getting our craft on today. I love it. All right. And I've used the heat gun before in some of my classes. I believe in the Valentine's Day class, I used the heat gun for the first time, but I think I've used it a couple other times before because it does kind of speed along the drying process when you're limited to just a one hour class. So it does sort of help move things along in a timely manner. And one reason you want these initial stripes to be bone dry is if they're still a little bit wet, even just a little bit moist, what can happen is the next layer of artists or painters tape we're going to apply, it won't adhere as well to the paper. And then what you might get is some of the paint seeping underneath the painters tape and kind of bleeding under. And I'll show you what that looks like. It doesn't always look bad. And with all of the lettering and the mousse we're going to trace on, a lot of uh, the, the letters and the mousse can cover any of those sort of seepage spots. Um, but to try and mitigate that, uh, we want it to be completely dry before we go over with the next set of stripes. So I'll show you here. Here's another one I did, same design. You can see uh, right here where it sort of bled a little bit. That's because I either didn't press down hard enough with the painter's tape right there, or this part wasn't fully dry and some of it seeped under. So if it happens today, that's probably why, because we're limited to an hour here. But I'm going to now carefully remove my painter's tape and we will sort of reveal our green candy cane because I think that's what it looks like. So I'm just gonna carefully pull. And you see what a nice, crisp, smooth line that yields. And again, if you want to, you can always reuse this painter's tape by peeling it off and then just sort of sticking it on the edge of your uh, table to reuse. Sometimes like when you're wrapping um, presents, you tear off strips of scotch tape or, and then you put it like on the tables. So you just pull the, the pieces of tape as you wrap your present. Kind of the same thing with this. You can just reuse it, kind of set it aside. All right, so I'm pulling, pulling, pulling. But I do like using actual artist tape. I do think it's a little bit tackier. You do have to be careful when pulling it off because it is tackier. Sometimes you can tear a little bit of the paper with it. So I kind of pull it at quite an angle to kind of mitigate that, prevent that from happening. Isn't that fun? I love just doing fun stuff like this. All right. Almost there. So we're basically going to repeat the exact same process, only the stripes are going to go in the opposite direction so they can crisscross and they will create a buffalo plaid check design. So I'm going to turn my work as if it were um, a landscape approach instead of a portrait orientation. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to create like a triangular shape. and place two pieces of painter's tape down to make a one and one half inch wide stripe. There we go, and press it down real hard so we can try and prevent any of that seepage here. And then I'm gonna use my ruler and my graphite pencil. I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the last set of stripes where I'm going to mark at one and a half inches with little dots in various spots along that second strip of tape just as a little guide for the next layer of painter's tape. So I'm gonna tear off another piece here. I'm gonna line that up along the dots to create a one and a half inch wide stripe. And then a second piece of tape to make this particular stripe one and a half inches wide. Just press down nice and firm. You can even kind of rub at it and then grab your pencil. Little dots at one and a half inches. 
this gets Andy, are bit. you slightly are you slightly overlaying the tape on top of the previous piece? I am not. They are literally just okay. right next to each other. Good question. I'm just I saying because from my video, I could see a little gap in between the, the tape on there. I don't know if that's on your end. Yeah, just like, I mean, I don't even know if you could really measure that. I mean, it's a very slight gap. Just try to um, lay them right next to each other um, and just try to be consistent in how you lay them right next to each other. I mean, if you want to overlap them a little, that's fine. I just make sure you do that to every single one so that the width of your stripes are the same. The same with if you leave a little gap between them. Um, just make sure you are consistent with that so it all works out evenly. But good question. All right, so I'm placing my another piece of tape here. Place another one right next to it. Press down. All right, so we're almost done here with the second set of stripes. Oops, have my ruler backwards there. So I'm just measuring one and a half inches with my ruler, making little dots all across that bottom piece of tape. More tape. When my family lived in Ohio, I did a superhero room for my boys and went through a lot of painter's tape doing that. It was like a skyline sort of theme where there were lots of buildings and it was like nighttime. It was a lot of fun, but boy, did it take a lot of tape. All right, I think I can squeeze in one more. All right, one and a half. This is gonna be a little tiny triangle, just like that first layer. All right, so for good measure, I'm just going to rub on these pieces of painter's tape. Just one more time, make sure they're all uh, adhering to the paper well. All right. And then we're ready to do the same process where we're just going to um, paint over each of these stripes. It looks like a maze right now or like a bit of a puzzle because we have that first set of stripes on. So just paint, well, the only place you really can paint is in between the pieces of painter's tape, okay? So I'm gonna use the second <clears throat> uh, mixture of green that we mixed up. All right, and I'm gonna just place my paint in the green. And I'm gonna start with this stripe again. And same process, just try to quickly cover the stripe. You're not going to wanna to work back and forth, back and forth, because we don't wanna activate or reactivate um, the first stripe that we painted on. We don't want that to blend in with the second new stripe. Uh, so just try to quickly and evenly sort of cover that first stripe. And if you run out of paint, you can just quickly mix some more. Just use the ratio of a pea-sized amount to uh, 10 drops of water. And it actually looks like I may need to mix a touch more. I think I'm gonna run out and I don't wanna fuss with it and run back and forth. So I'm just not even gonna do that. So I'm placing a pea-sized amount into that well. Quickly place uh, 10 scoops of water. And then that way I don't have to worry about the ratio being off or being different. When you use Piece size scoop, 10 scoops of water. It will get you to the same spot. And then just stir. This will be one where I want to be really careful to make sure I thoroughly stir that scoop of paint into the water so I don't get a thick streak of the hooker's green light onto the white of the paper. And I can use my sample pad just to make sure it's the same opacity. It is. I'm good to go. And then I can go ahead and paint on this next stripe. And then I'll have enough to finish. I almost dipped it in the black there. Ooh, that would have been, that would have been bad. We would have had a multicolored buffalo check going on here. All right, there we go. All right, so there's our second layer. So you can kind of see the buffalo check forming because we did wet over dry, that's the technique. So wet paint over dry paint. And so it just darkened the squares from the first stripes we painted on, whereas the first, area of paper covered on the second stripes are a lighter value. And that's because we did wet over dry. If we had tried to do this wet over wet, we would have not been able to yield a buffalo plaid design because it all would have just blended into each other. So I'm gonna use my heat gun again. I'm gonna fully dry the second set of stripes in the same way I did the first one. 
I'm going to give it like a good minute and a half here or so to make sure this is fully dry. And it will have a little bit more time to dry as we cut out the mousse stencil. Uh, but because I'm going to be tearing up the painter's tape, I just want to make sure this is good and dry before I do that. So you again can do this with uh, any color you want. If you want to make it red, you can make it red. I made one of these as a draft using red. Um, you could even use two colors. I think if you use two colors, you'd want to do colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel, or you'd want to use two primary colors, because uh, then when you overlap them, it will create a secondary color. So if you use like yellow and red where they overlap, it'll take on kind of an orange appearance. So a lot of different techniques or um, things you could do with this process. I think that's probably good here. All right, so now I'm going to carefully tear up these artist tape or painter's tape. And then you can kind of set them aside like I'm doing. I'm sort of sticking them on the side of my uh, drafting table here to use again on another project because I use painter's tape a lot. It's one of those tools you may not think you need for your craft room, but I use it all the time to adhere things, tape things down, keep things still. We'll actually use a small piece of painter's tape even to keep the um, mousse stencil still as we trace around it so it doesn't shift as you're trying to trace around it. Um, so it does come in handy. I use painter's tape sometimes to um, adhere uh, uh, watercolor pieces to a mat board. Um, lots of different uses for it. Okay, so you can see the buffalo plaid comes to life when you tear off that second layer of tape here. Go pull that off, and then one more little one here to reveal the pure white paper. All right, how about that? How cool does that look? And you can also do vertical and horizontal stripes. You don't have to do the diagonal like I did. I just sort of liked the look of the diagonal for this particular project. So um, we're done with uh, our paint for now. We're going to return to it for the black in a minute. But for now, I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to pull down the mousse stencil that says, please print before class, because I'm going to use my pair of scissors here, my festive holiday scissors. And I am going to start by just broadly just cutting around the mousse because it'll make it easier for me to cut out the detailed areas if I just roughly cut around it for now. And then just take your time and cut around it. Now for these antlers, these antlers are pretty detailed and small. So I think with the antlers, I will just cut right above it and I'll freehand draw the actual antlers, but I am going to try and precisely cut out everything else. And I feel like smaller scissors would maybe come in handy here, but I'm just using what I have. I just got these scissors when I bought a bunch of wrapping paper to wrap presents with. Scissors are like pacifiers. If you have little kids, um, you can have a million of them, but you can never find one when you need it. So I feel like scissors are always something I'm buying, but I think part of that is because my daughter always takes them and use the, uses them for crafts and then we can't find them. So uh, yes, that's why I make the joke that they're like pacifiers because that was true when my kids were really little. I could never find a pacifier, even though I swore I had like 20 of them somewhere. Take your time here. I'm taking my time to get this just right. And I think even taking your time cutting this out is still a little bit faster than trying to freehand draw this thing. But if you have a light box or even a well lit window, you can always just um, trace this on. Or if you aren't trying to keep up with me in real time, you can always freehand draw it. But just to keep up with me in the hour, I think this is the the best method. I'm gonna say something else in there, man. If, if for those people out there that maybe have a cricket machine, that might be something they want to use as well to make the stencil. Oh, good idea. Especially yeah, when you have a lot of those intricate cuts in there and stuff like that. Yeah, I think this project as a whole could be really cute using like the vinyl too. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
So I'm almost back to those antlers. So again, I'm just gonna cut right above the antlers and then I will just freehand draw all those little parts on the antler because that won't take long. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to look exactly like this outline to, to have it be the silhouette of antlers. But uh, we'll use a piece of painter's tape, like I said, to just kind of tape this onto the paper, keep it still as we trace around it. I also think if you have um, cardstock, printing this on cardstock, it might be a little harder to cut out, but once it's cut out, it'll be easier to trace around. I'm just using cheap printer's paper here, but it still works um, just fine doing that. All right, so I'm going to pull back over my buffalo uh, plaid and I'm going to take a piece of the painter's tape from earlier. I'm just going to tear off a little piece of it. I can even do two um, and I'm going to just maybe I'll cut that even in half. Place, curl it up, place one there, curl up this other little piece and maybe place one towards the right. And then we just want to center this on. Just center it and then once you have it where it looks centered, Sort of press down on that tape to help it adhere and now it won't shift. All right, so I'm going to use my graphite pencil and I'm going to start tracing around. All right, and I'm excited to show you my other class I have coming up in December. So I have one more class for 2021. Hard to believe this year is almost over. I think this might be the fastest year that has gone by in my life yet. I really cannot believe <laughs> it's already the middle of November, but it is. So, and next month's class is very Christmassy. I don't know how many of you like to bake Christmas cookies. It's something I do every single year. I love it. So if you like to bake Christmas cookies, you'll like the class that is coming up. And it also uses one of my favorite witty sayings of late. I've said before in these classes, I am all about a good pun, just witty sayings. And uh, this particular saying is one that is near and dear to me. Um, I actually, a few years ago, bought my husband a t-shirt that said this saying, because <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. So stay tuned for that project if you don't already know what it is. If you follow me on Instagram, my handle's Mandy Peltier Artist. I posted what that class is this morning. So you may have already seen it, but after you have the moose traced on, you can tear off. And I told you I was going to just freehand draw the antlers. So I'm just gonna sort of look at this and use this as just sort of a guide for the antlers in his ear. There we go. And I'll hold that up so you can see. And now we can go ahead and do the lettering. So I will pull down the full sized um, outline so I can place my lettering. So for Moose Lodge along the top, I'm going to place an arch to help me write on the lettering. And for the ski skate sled, I'm going to draw on an arch that goes in the other direction. Uh, because this goes up and the ski skate sled goes down. So I'll start by doing an arch along the top for Moose Lodge. Just try to make an even arch. And if you trace this on, um, you won't have the graphite line here. Um, so if you trace it on, you'll just have the letters, but you can still erase the graphite line when you're done. So Moose Lodge is 11 characters if you count the space. So the space is going to be right in the center of the arch and right in the center of the paper. So I'm just gonna draw a little dash there so I can mark the center. And then I'm just going to write lodge first. And um, you can use your own handwriting. You don't have to use the example handwriting I have here. Um, you can use your own, but I chose sort of rustic looking lettering um, where some of the, the aspects of each letter extend past the letter, um, but you can do your own. And I'm using the arch as a guide for my letters so that it kind of curves, the words kind of curve. Um, but just take your time here with each letter, give it that rustic uh, lettering look if you want, or you can just use your own handwriting or your own font. I know a lot of um, the students who take these classes do uh, hand lettering. So you may already have a uh, font you really like and you can just use that. 
And I'm going to go on the other side here and I'm going to write moose. And I, I do it in a weird way, maybe. I sort of, whatever is center, I write what's to the left of it. And then I work reverse to the left. <laughs> um, it just sort of helps me center everything. But you may have your own method. And that is fine. And then two O's. And then an M. And then right below Moose Lodge, I have um, established 1958. So that is one of my parents' birthdays. Um, and I also thought the year kind of fit the rustic theme. Um, so I'm going to just write the established 1958. You can choose your own year. It was just a year that was meaningful to me. And again, I just thought it fit the theme. But you can do whatever year you want. You can choose um, your anniversary year if you want, if you have like a special anniversary that you want to sort of document or maybe the birth date of a loved one, whatever you want to do. Um, and then I'm going to do an arch along the bottom here for the ski skate sled. Let's try and make it even. And the watercolor is dry, so you can erase. And I can see even my moose lodge is a little off culture there, but I'll leave it. All right, so ski skate sled. The A and the T in skate are gonna be the center. So um, I'm gonna place another little dash along the center of that arch. And um, I'm gonna place the A and the T just to the left and right of that, and then keep going. And the spaces for ski skate sled are gonna be dots. And then sled, work your way around. And then I do my weird thing of working backwards. All right, ski. Great. And I'm going to address this moose lodge. It's going to bother me. I'm going to redo my O's, make them just a slight bit smaller. So it's a little more even. Yeah, that looks much better. I'm glad I did that. It would have really bothered me otherwise. Okay, so I think we'll start with um, painting on the Moose Lodge lettering and then the established 1958. So because the black that we're using is so opaque, um, this is where you can kind of cheat if you want and use the black pro marker. You're not going to be able to notice that this is marker and that the moose is watercolor uh, because the black is so opaque. Um, so I'll go ahead and paint on the moose lodge, but then I'll write on the smaller established 1958 and the ski skate sled. So you can kind of see that you can't really see a difference. So we're going to use our number four to paint on the black. And I haven't used the, the number four since we mixed the paint color. So I'm just going to give it a little swish and blot it. And I'm going to place my number four in my water glass here. And let me also pull over uh, the finished one so you can see them side by side. Shuffle things around here. So I'm going to try and thicken up my downstroke. So when you do lettering, uh, where your pencil moves in a downward motion, um, I'm going to just thicken up those spots. I guess one exception would be this M. I'm more thickening up each side of the M than I am the downstrokes. But for the most part, I'm going to be thickening up the downstrokes by either you can use firmer pressure or you can just go over it a, a second time with a second line that's a little bit thicker than the first line. So however you want to do it is fine. You see this black is really opaque in a really nice way. But you can draw on the moose lettering as well. You do not have to um, paint it on. Painting on lettering can be a learning curve. I feel like I am still growing and learning when it comes to lettering. It's like it's a medium all of its own. I, I, I feel like it's there's um, a lot of precision and patience to be had when you're uh, painting on lettering. So you can always write it on if you want. And I find it always helps when you're painting on lettering to break it up into chunks, to not try and paint on the lettering as if you were writing it on. But whenever it feels natural to pick up your brush and then um, apply it again from a different angle, do that if that's gonna help you maintain control. Do whatever helps. And then the more you do it, the easier it gets, I promise. All 
All right, so I'm almost done with the moose. Now I'm gonna do lodge. And if you can't keep up with me in real time with the lettering, no big deal. You can always finish this when the class is done. It's literally just applying black over everything. So I like this project because I, I don't think it requires um, years of experience with watercolor. Um, you could be brand new to watercolor and be successful with this project because um, it's more just applying the red stripe or green stripes and then applying the black to the lettering and to the mousse. And um, if you don't want to use the black paint, you could always just use the black marker. So you have a lot of options to customize it to your skill level and still be successful. I think this is a great e equalizer kind of project that has a holiday vibe to it, or at least like a wintry vibe. All right. And then we're going to use the black to paint on the moose as well. But for now, I'm gonna, like I said, use the marker to paint on the rest of the, or to, to write on the list, rest of the lettering. These pro marker markers have two tips. It has just a normal marker tip and it also has a chisel tip. I'm going to use the regular marker tip so that I can get um, thin lines. And then I'll hold this up so you can see that you're not really gonna be able to see much of a difference between the marker in the watercolor. All right, so hold that up. Not much difference, right? So you can always use the marker if you want. You can use it for all of it if you want, but um, I do recommend using the watercolor for the mousse. And if you need the black marker to be even darker, you can always go over it a second time and that will darken it up further. So for the mousse, I'm going to paint on the mousse with the black. So I'm working from top to bottom here so I don't smear anything. And I'm gonna use my number four and I'm just going to carefully paint on the mousse with the black paint. And it will dry quite opaque, but you might see a little bit of it peeking out through the green or the white. And I think that adds a nice effect. It, it still lets you know this is watercolor, that you uh, didn't use acrylic or vinyl. Um, so just work within that outline you drew on and paint on the mousse. Whenever I think of moose, I think of that stand-up kit about a uh, skit about um, what is the plural of moose. And I always think moosen and all the other funny things that were in that skit. I don't know if you guys have seen that skit, but it's hilarious. Mooses, moosen, I can't remember what else there was, moose eye. <laughs> so I'm just painting on following the outline here. I don't know if any of you today are from Alaska, or Canada, or the UP, where there's moose. They are pretty amazing creatures, just huge. So I'm using just the tip of my brush to help me get this paint into the small areas of the mousse. That's the nice thing about these round watercolor brushes is you can do really thin strokes with them. And if you use the larger part of the brush, you can do things a little bit thicker. So I'm using every aspect of this brush to help me get this black onto the mousse in a efficient manner. I think I've said efficient a lot of times today. <laughs> it's an efficient project, what can I say? And we are pretty good on time, but I think just to make sure we don't run over at all, I will go ahead and draw on the last of the lettering instead of painting it on, but you can certainly paint it on if you want. And that will give me time to see your projects if you were able to create along with me. And then I can show you the cookie project that I'm gonna be teaching next month. So I'm gonna use the brush tip again. 
and I'm just going to carefully write on ski, skate, sled. I love the alliteration there. And then when you give the marker a chance to dry, which won't take long, and for the mousse to dry, you can erase any graphite pencil lines that still show. Um, but I just wanna encourage you, if you're not already, follow me on social media. I post about drafts I'm working on, future classes. I do written projects. I've done a few videos. So you can just sort of keep informed of all of it. And this is sideways now, you can't really read it, but my handle across all of social media is at Mandy Peltier Artist. You can also go to my website, mandypeltier.com and you can see all of the previous classes I've taught, written projects I've done, download the instructions, the videos are embedded. You can find everything you need at mandypeltier.com along with future classes. And then also be sure to tag Windsor or Newton and make it with Michaels if you do post your <clears throat> finished projects on social media. All right, so the class, December 7th, it's a Tuesday, same hour as this, two o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. I'll be teaching this OSNAP. I just, <laughs> it cracks me up, this thing, I just love it. Um, so you see this little gingerbread man has lost part of his leg. Um, so this is just a fun little whimsical, cute, funny piece uh, for the holidays. So I hope you'll join me, it's December 7th, 2 p.m., the link to register is up now on the Michaels website. And I know Tim said he was going to put it in the chat. So you can always click on that link and uh, sign up for the free class there. Um, so I'm gonna share my other camera because we're just about out of time here. If you were able to keep up with me or you tried to paint along with me, I'd love for you to hold up your finished piece so I can see it. I'll switch to gallery view here so I can get a better look. Oh, these look great. Katie, your uh, stripes look perfect. I don't see any seepage. That looks awesome. Oh, and Nat, yours looks good. I can tell you freehanded it. It looks awesome. And Sharon, yours looks good. Oh, I can't mention everyone's name because there's so many of them, but Jarell, Marianne, Bob, you all did awesome. I'm impressed. Looks like you guys did great and were able to keep up with me with ease. So um, I hope I'll see you on December 7th. I also have some classes in the works for 2022. So um, I hope to see you then as well, but I hope you all have a blessed holiday season. I know Thanksgiving, I think is already next week. Again, I like, I cannot believe how fast this year is going. So I think hope you guys have a wonderful blessed Thanksgiving and I'll see you all soon.